across nations. And it's always humbling to me that anytime we beckon on him and say, come to Macedonia or come to South Africa and come and be with us, he always never says no. He's been here now. He doesn't need any introduction. He's been here for four consecutive years now. And it will never stop in Jesus' name. He will be back here next year. Amen. By the grace of the almighty God. House of Treasures Ministries. Ownership Conference 2023. South Africa and the rest of the world. Please help me welcome the ministry gift of Apostle Joshua Selman. Come on. Come on. Come on. Celebrate him. the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, this woman of God, I remember getting to listen to this, her song. Didn't know what she was saying, but I just enjoyed the worship. And now, I think this is this is the latest version truly. This this one right here. Right here. Let's give her a big God bless you. Amazing, incredible worshiper. Hallelujah. South Africa is my joy and honor to be here again. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Hallelujah. I want you to truly help me honor my dear friend and brother and his dear wife, Apostle Felix Oko. Let's give him a big God bless you and his lovely wife. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I truly honor every man, woman of God here. Um, I believe that conferences like this are moments of upgrade in the spirit where God grants us access to encounter his power and to encounter his grace and just seeing the crowd in this place you need to stand where I'm standing to appreciate what God is doing here incredible incredible people and to know that there are many more outside and then thousands more connected online we thank God for what he's doing not only in South Africa but in truth across the entire continent there is a real resurrection happening hallelujah and i'm glad that no african nation will be left behind and indeed no nation of the earth will be left behind hallelujah are we ready tonight can we do a little prayer meeting can we pray for a few minutes seriously pray say father one more time say father Tonight, I obtain grace to receive grace to understand grace to be imparted by your word. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Let it be from the depth of your heart. South Africa, pray. Skalemba shalakata vrande gebas. Ah, hallelujah. Shali sabarento skaprakate palakatos. Skadabarekate parakatos shoto vrande gebarekata. Go ahead and invest a few minutes in the spirit. Skadabarekate vrande gebarekatos koto vrande gebarekos yata. Watching across the globe from the nations of the earth. Join us as we pray. Join us in this atmosphere of worship and prayer. Shaparakata vrande gebarekos. 
Abaye komende ke zika brande ko Arande ko ko shete beke dano Raka baya brande ko Baye ke sombe ke seliga brande ko Rato ko bese ke beke ko Ataba kira mombe ne ku salaba Baya ate ko saliata Babaru saliga brande ke dano Reka papa la kapaya braga kata 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 braga Rabada Bashataya, Shaya Bregata, 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 Rakata Prasakata Prakata Lakata Prakata Raya Raka Prakata 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 Aske valamento ke liga bragados rade boko seke babalambi ya katam bragados in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus oh be lifted oh yes above all other gods we lay our crown and worship you you Above all other gods, South Africa, we lay our crown and worship you. Help me. Oh, glorious God, we pray. We very sensitive tonight and all through the remaining part of this conference because every time we gather in his name I assure you that the spirit of the Lord is doing many things redirecting destinies empowering others bringing healing and deliverance and many of you whilst you listen to the word whilst you connect to the worship there are fountains locked up within your spirit that are being drawn out in this atmosphere. Do not make the mistake of Jacob. He said in Genesis 32, 28, he said, The Lord was in this place and I knew not. 
And then God came again in chapter 32. Samala Kusiata. And he said, I will not let you go. Mm. I will not let you go. No. My family will not let you go. Hallelujah. My destiny will not let you go. Yes, sir. Until. 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 I just sense in my spirit that would take this her song just once or twice. I don't speak South African, but I'm a spiritual man. I know when there is an anointing upon a song. Please, can you come? Give her the mic. I want to take that song once, twice. You're not listening to a special number. This is a ladder for you to climb this time around. There, there is an ascendance that God wants to bring in the spirit tonight. Mm. Yes, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, before you sit down, before you sit down, just let's just do this. The waters is being stirred in this place. I sense that there are people here, you are called into the ministry of prophetic worship. The hand of the Lord is about to rest upon you. There is a grace right now as I speak. I want you to bring them out. She's going to sing this song. And with this song, this is the first impartation tonight. There are men and women. Listen, the revival that is coming upon the nations will ride upon the wings of worship. It will be as it were in the days of Jehoshaphat. That we will sing songs that will cause the gates of nations to be opened. I want to pray right now. Father, in this place, I stand upon these graces here represented. Everyone called into the ministry of prophetic worship right now by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I stretch my hands. May that grace come upon you now. 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 South Africa, hear the word of the Lord. It will not be a few people. Every region in South Africa will have prophetic worshippers position. Churches will begin to have from among their members, even those who were not originally called into worship, they will step into these mantles 
and bring songs, songs of healing, songs of deliverance, songs of power, songs of grace, songs that will shift the climate of government, will shift economic climate. I speak this by the Spirit of the Living God. Let the sounds of worship, let the sounds of revival rise from South Africa to the ends of the earth. Let the sounds of worship, the sounds of power rise from South Africa. Hallelujah. Listen. In dealing with spiritual things, you need to learn to discern seasons and discern moments. Seasons and moments. You may be able to discern seasons, but if you cannot discern moments, you will miss Kairos moments in the spirit. Hallelujah. Have it at the back of your mind that this is not just a manifestation of flesh or a, a display of some kind of, you know, church. No, 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 no. God is in the business of doing things. Some of you have fasted. Some of you have prayed. I understand the church has been praying. Do you believe there is a God that answers prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please don't be tired of me, my dear. You're going to raise that song two more times. Then we get, if all I do is introduce my session, no problem, we'll wrap up and continue. Listen. Do you know why the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving? Listen. It says, and his courts with praise. It says, come before him with singing. This is the protocol in the spirit. Hallelujah. Truly there is a grace upon this song even for this conference. Apostle Felix designed it and as she sings it once or twice again we're just going to allow the spirit of God like the dew of Hammon rest upon people. Rest upon ministries. Rest upon destinies. For the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, now the earth was dark, void and formless. Then it says the spirit of the Lord hovered round the face of the waters. And then God said, light be, healing be, breakthrough be, lifting be, a new season be, but not before the hovering of the spirit. The assignment of worship is to create that atmosphere where the Spirit of God now begins to hover across the people. Then the word comes and it comes with power. Go ahead. Father, we pray upon all that you have brought out by the Spirit that they will begin their seasons of dealing in the Spirit until flesh dies and then the glory be revealed even in worship. May their yieldedness capture deep songs, mighty songs, 
songs of power songs of revival in the name of Jesus the Christ on account of this assignment let every pruning let every dealing of the spirit find expression in your life until you become vessels unto honor even by the spirit of God and as I pray for them I pray for everyone may God do a work in us even tonight in the name of Jesus let's give Jesus a big hand clap God bless you hallelujah please be seated if you can I'm going to be doing a three-part series of teachings in line with the theme we'll start today and by the grace of God we have a session tomorrow and then in the evening and then I understand the final session with the youth so please make sure that your heart is ever connected if I were you I would still come for the youth meeting Amen. hallelujah yeah. commissioned with power part one commissioned with power part one Mm. There is there is a rain that will fall in this place tonight. Yes, sir. The Spirit of God has chosen to move as the rain. Isaiah 32 15. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, then the wilderness be counted for a fruitful field, and then a fruitful field be counted for a forest commissioned with power. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Please pay attention. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The word power there is the Greek word exousia, authority, capacity to represent me. I give you authority. Authority is the right to use power legitimately. You can have power, but if you do not have authority, you can be arrested for using power. I can buy a gun, that is power, but I need a license, authority. What Jesus gave the church is more than power. He gave the church authority. Are we together now? Yes. Behold, I give unto you authority. KJV did not do justice to that expression. But the word there is authority and then power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy. Matthew 28, please, verse 18. Matthew 28, 18. Commissioned with power. 28, 18. And Jesus came and said unto them, saying same word all authority Jesus is making this statement all authority is given to me in heaven and in the earth the next two words shout it one two go ye mm -mm, mm -mm. just the first two words ready one two one more time. One more time. He never said think ye. He never said wonder ye. Listen. That means before you take any step, make sure you understand what I said before. That all authority in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me. Then he says, go ye. The third word gives perspective to the first two therefore in light of the aforementioned go ye go ye means preach ye go ye means do business ye go ye means advance without fear without favor go ye means whatever you see do not mind it 
therefore means be more conscious of what I have said than what you see. All authority. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ was built and ordained to be a church of power, to be a church of grace, to be a manifestation, an ever-increasing effulgence of the wisdom of God. The only institution on earth where God has chosen to tabernacle. He's not in a hospital. He's not in a school. You don't find his presence in a library. You do not even find him in a stadium. If you look for his residence on earth, you find him in the church. In Revelation chapter 1, the Bible says, I, John, he was in the Isle of Patmos on account of the testimony of the Lord. And John said that he heard a voice. And when he turned to see who was speaking, he saw seven lampstands. Those lampstands represent the Catholic, the universal church. Then he says, in the midst of the lampstand, he saw the Son of Man. You will always find him in the midst of the lampstand. Then he began to describe him, the hair, the apparel. And when John saw this, he knew, he said, right, for these things are faithful and they are true. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, there's no time to really discuss what the church is. Hopefully in another platform, God will grant us the grace. But the church was ordained by God to represent three things. Number one, the church is a strategy beyond men the first revelation of the church is a strategy God's own invention the church was a product of God's own creativity the only strategy that is saddled with the responsibility of stamping the gate of hell I will build my church it didn't say we I this is exclusively a product. I, I decided to invent a strategy to stamp the gate of hell. And I named that strategy the Ecclesia, the church. Number two, the church represents men and women who are the living stones that are used to build that spiritual house. The apostle will tell us that we are living stones. This beautiful building is a composite of many stones put together and he calls us the living stones that are built into a spiritual house the very habitation of the lord adumbrated by the temple that solomon built he built that with natural stones but this time around that temple when solomon was done building he said now O lord arise he says come to your resting place now the church has become that resting place. You will always find him in that temple. Number three, the church represents an institution. The only institution that represents the most accurate communication of God's will and intent on earth. The church as an institution represents the most accurate platform for knowing the mind of God, learning the ways of God, and becoming like God. No other institution on earth, no matter how dexterous, has been given that privilege. Only the church. Prophet Micah saw this, and he says, It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be lifted exalted above every other mountain he says and all nations shall flow to it they will say to one another come he says let us go to the mount of the lord to the house of jacob he says he will teach us his ways when you want to find god on earth his location is the church the church is the only institution. Now, it doesn't matter whether we're living up to it or not. I am just telling you that this is our destiny by God's design. To be as an institution, the most accurate communication of this mysterious and unknown God. Our assignment as a church is to give form, fashion, visibility and understanding to God. Hallelujah. 
The church was designed by God to be a place of extraordinary people. People who are in human flesh but are truly not human. Hallelujah. Now, make sure you understand what I'm saying. It is true. Because when Jesus walked upon the earth, he carried a body that was framed from the womb of Mary. But when Nicodemus saw his works, here was his conclusion. Rabbi, he says, John 3, 1 and 2. We know that thou art a man sent from God. He never mentioned Mary. The conclusion of an intelligent man on seeing the manifestation of Jesus he said, no, these, the resources that come from this man is not affordable in the world of men. He must be a man sent from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, he says, except God be with him. So the church is a blend of extraordinary people. The church was so designed by God to be the most vocal communication of his power, his wisdom, his creativity. I like how the Bible puts it in Ephesians 2.10. We'll consult these verses many times tonight. It says we are his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had foreordained, designed that we should walk in them. Another scripture, Ephesians 3.10, it says, Now to the intent, Paul is speaking, that unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church, the manifold, many-sided, multifaceted wisdom of God. That means the conclusion of the world on seeing us should be that there is a God indeed. Are we together now? There has to be a conclusion that on looking at the church, walk in power, grace, wisdom, and taking advantage of all the resources of heaven as you'll be learning. Something, the end of the whole journey of the making of the church, even the believer, is glory. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit saying that there is the hidden wisdom of God that has been hidden before time and meant for our glory. Listen, that means when you start your journey with God, at any point he finds you, you already know that the end of it is called glory. <laughs> glory comes from two very interesting words. The Greek is kabod. The Hebrew, uh, the, the Hebrew is kabod, the Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness of a thing as an attempt to measure the true worth of it. It was an ancient system that was used to measure wealth with metals. So when you say the glory of a thing, you have to explore all the features that make that thing admirable or worthy of worship or makes it expensive. The glory of my phone cannot be seen until you tell me the features in the phone. The glory of my cloth cannot be seen until you go ahead to now tell me where the fabric was sourced from. All of those information is an attempt to burn into your heart how expensive or rare or valuable. That means when God begins a journey with a believer, as complicated and confusing as that journey is, he mandates that you trust him because even though you may not understand where he's taking you, he leaves you with an assurance based on his integrity that the end of that dealing is glory. That means if at any point in your Christian pursuit you do not yet see glory, he says keep moving. If all you see is tears, keep moving. There is still a layer beyond tears. If all you see is delay, keep pressing, keep praying, keep fasting. Because the end of the destiny of every believer, including the church, is glory. Please sit down. Everything God does is for the revelation and the manifestation of his glory. In John's synoptic account of the miracles of Jesus, you find that in chapter 2 and then 10 and 11. After turning water to wine, the Bible ends that beautiful rendition by telling us verse 11 now. It says, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. Is that in your Bible? 
and the Bible says, and manifested forth his glory. That was the intent of the miracle. To see something about God you have never seen. That means all of us together have been, God has deposited different layers of his glory in our lives and our destiny. And your assignment is to walk with him as you unveil it. For some to come in worship. For some to come in creativity. For some to come in business. Some to come in ministry. But by all means that what you call your lifetime is the time allotted for you to walk with the Holy Spirit until the glory of God manifests in and through your life did he not say it so well in matthew 5 and verse 16 after telling us we are light and salt he says permit your light the word let means permit to so shine before men he says that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven John 15 and verse 8. Herein is our father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16. Thou hast not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Hallelujah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in as much as we have been called to be a representation of the wisdom, the power, the grace of God. Sadly, the current state of the church is not an accurate portrait. It's not an accurate representation of this design and this agenda. Even Paul speaking to the Hebrew church, he quoted what the psalmist said. What is man that thou art mindful of? The son of man that thou visitest him. He says, for you have made him a little lower than Elohim. Crowned him with glory and power. You have set him over the works of your hands. And that in doing so, you left nothing that was not under his feet. He says, but we do not yet see all things. As it is, when we look at South Africa, Kenya, Ghana, Nigeria, Europe, US. We do not yet see. A manifestation of the glory of God by and through the church to match God's expectation. This is our assignment in this conference. With the intelligence of a surgeon, with the wisdom of a consultant to diagnose what is wrong. What is the contrast between that which has been spoken and intended by the spirit and that which is our current reality. In as much as God is helping the church, we have to admit an uncomfortable truth that the church today is not a worthy portrait of the power, the wisdom, the grace of God. That men cannot so learn God through the lens of our lives. If they depend on our lives to know who God is, they have a legitimate ground to run away from him. The powerlessness that is captured in our lives, are we together now? Bold propositions about God without the fortitude to defend it. We say God lifts, but we are not lifted. We say God can bless, but it is clear that his hand is not at work in that wise. We say God can change times and seasons, but we look like victims of moments, victims of seasons. We quote that all things work together for good to them that love God, but our frustration is clear. Even unbelievers have to comfort us because they know that something is wrong. But we do not yet see all things under his feet. We do not yet see all things so when God looks at my life, Joshua Selman, he may tap me at the back, but he will still say, son, you are not yet an accurate representation. Listen, when you look at yourself in a mirror and you do not see yourself, you clean the mirror or you do something about yourself. Uh, if the mirror is clear and there is nothing wrong with you, there should be an exact, we call it object and image. They should agree. Am I right on that? That means when God looks at the church, he should see himself. That is proof that the church has been transformed. That we have evolved. In Revelations, when you read chapter 18, chapter 19, he spoke to Paul and he spoke to John and he said, come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he said, he showed me a city, not a woman, a city. 
a city that was equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. And he said, John, this is the lamb's wife. If you know anything about a woman preparing for wedding, a few weeks to her wedding is a very precious moment. While the man is trying to sort bills, the woman is sorting herself. You, we learned that with Esther. It took Esther one year to be prepared. That was a prophetic representation, an adumbration of the church. Hey guy, the keeper of the, the virgins gave her a certain ointment. There was an oil. Her, her skin needed to be in a kind of fashion that will appease the king. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife, the ecclesia, the church. And what he showed John was not weakness. What he showed John was not imbalance. He showed a city. A city in strength. A city dexterous. A city of power. He said, this is the lamb's wife. That means our assignment is to set our gaze on that standard. And never stop. If that is the lamb's wife. If that is God's expectation for me. Then it means... I must learn how to walk with the word of God, walk with the spirit of God, take advantage of all the resources of heaven to keep evolving and never stopping. No wonder the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. Are we still together? It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then he says, we all, say all. all. When it has to do with evolving to become like Christ, it is the destiny of all. There are things in the Bible that he will say he gave some. But as far as transformation and conformity to the image and the character of the Christ is concerned, it is the destiny of every believer. But we all, with faces unveiled, beholding him as in a mirror, he says we are changed from glory to glory. Glory. Glory to glory. That is the destiny. Glory to glory. So any believer who means business with God, any pastor, any man of God, any captain of industry, whoever has any passion for the things of God, must admit uncomfortably so that whilst we have done well, there is still a lot to be done as far as God's standard is concerned reminds me of Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry mighty miracles raised the dead did so many things here's the conclusion of a hungry and a desperate man I count myself he says to not have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind he says I set my gaze towards the things that are behind for me he said I press that should be a language that only learners will speak professionals should not speak that language but when it has to do with becoming like christ that must become your language i press even as a man of god i press as a businessman i press because there is a standard you are not given the liberty of choosing your standard there is a benchmark already in Christ and your assignment is to walk with the Spirit of God until you become an experience it says my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you you, you. are we together Tonight, because of our time, I just want to give you three reasons why the church is in this current state. Three reasons. When it has to do with the business of conformity and transformation by the Spirit, there are no masters, there are no professionals. All of us together remain students in the school of the Spirit. So the one who is speaking to you today, we are only speaking on the strength of the election of grace. But as far as that pursuit is concerned, we do not stand as those who have arrived. That will be pride and deception. We must, we must lead a generation to understand and respect hunger. If at any point you believe you are arrived, it's an attack. Are we together? Hmm. 
South Africa. Are we here together? So three reasons. This is my assignment tonight. Commissioned with power. We're examining the church. Why is the church weak? Why do we have sick people still return sick? Believers who love Jesus still financially incapacitated. People who love the Lord not rising to places of influence and power. Legislating on behalf of heaven. And yet we call ourselves expensive and implicated names. For instance, ambassadors. You ask any serious government and any serious nation. There are diplomats here seated. I'm not here to insult your pedigree. But you know that if an individual tells you he's an ambassador. Your primary assignment is to promote and protect the interest of of that nation and that government in a foreign land and if at any point you are found fraternizing with any government at the expense of your homeland there are severe consequences first to you and then to the nation you represent hmm. is that true three reasons for the current state of the church psalms 49 and verse 20 disturbed me for very many years why this kind of scripture should be found in the Bible I'd like us to read it together shout it if you're a Christian ready one to read man that is in honor and understandeth it not is like a beast that perisheth what kind of a scripture is this that a man who has been placed in a position of honor but that if there is no understanding of that status that man is reduced to become like a beast in the field that has no destiny except to be a prey to other beasts. Man that is in honor, that understandeth it not, will perish like a beast in the field. There are three reasons. Pray in the spirit for one minute. We're in a spiritual conference. This is beyond the lecture. This is beyond the seminar. This is beyond just selling an intellectual idea. Sabashala kapras keberento skaria, krafas kebelede bakatos kapre samashanas. Mani sene kebereketas kapra kashida kaliata. Prato shala kapras kebrande kebeletia. San apostolic and a prophetic conference. God is helping us to know and love and understand him. Hallelujah. Reason number one, very quickly. South Africa, please hear me. Africa, all those who are connecting. The first reason as to why the church, even though we have been destined unto glory, to be an accurate portrait, a representation of God in his entirety, we have so fallen short of that standard. And reason number one, as the Bible reveals, is that there is a bankruptcy of a revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is. Now, don't assume you understand what I'm saying. You just write and be patient with me. The absence of a revelation of who we are in light of who Christ is. Man that is in honor and understand that it not. My Bible, your Bible, our Bible say that he will be like a beast in the field that perisheth. Psalms 82 and verse 5 tells us, they know not, neither will they understand, the Bible says. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse, and Jesus himself made reference to this verse. He said, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some, are children of the most high. But not knowing that will lead to the next verse. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. There are many things that the Bible says the church is. There are many things that Jesus said the believer is. In communicating your interest for God and the things of his spirit. 
you have a responsibility to journey with the Holy Spirit through scripture to find out with the passion of an archaeologist what did he say about me? What has he said about me? Gideon never took out time to find out he was hiding. As soon as the angel of the Lord came to him, he called him by his destiny. Oh, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said, no, that is a foreign statement. Nobody in my father's house ever told us we are that mighty. We are the least. This is the information we have on record. We are the least in our father's house and the least of all the tribes. And the angel said, you are wrong. I'm bringing to you another identity. You cannot carry that revelation to the battlefield. You will lose already before the journey. At the end of it, Gideon blew with the shofar and 33,000 people were summoned. The same person who was hiding. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, hear me. This is more than a theological dissertation. It will be by the spirit to give us a revelation of who we have become in light of who Christ is. Let's walk a few scriptures. Do you like scriptures? I promise I will not keep you later than necessary. If I show you this scripture and we wrap up tonight, that is sufficient for tonight. But I want you to be sensitive. Because you see, the same Lord is rich unto all. But the reason why it looks like certain people carry greater weights and dimensions of his glory is not that God decided to isolate a few people necessarily. The Bible says even among the stars, one differed from another in glory. He said there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial. Are we together? In fact, here's what he says. He says, in a great house, there are four kinds of vessels. All called vessels, but four kinds. Of gold, silver, wood, clay. Some vessels already, by their formation, they are unto dishonor. And some vessels are unto honor. And that every man has the assignment to transit himself. In our world today, clay and wood cannot become gold and silver. But in God's economy, transition is possible. That clay and wood can start evolving. Something you can do with God can change your state until you become silver and you become gold. What does the Lord say about us? In fact, let me give you the three reasons there will be a discussion all through my sessions in this conference. So number one is a product of identity. 1 John 4, 17. 1 John 4, 17. Please give it to us. 1 John 4, 17. The Bible says, Herein is our love made perfect, entire, that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is. South Africa, is that in your Bible? As he is not as he was if the bible says as he was there are many many things jesus did not carry when he walked upon the earth for instance no man could receive eternal life from him when he walked upon the earth because the substitutionary sacrifice was not yet done are we together So as he is, so are we, not so we will become, so are we in this world. Reason number two for the current state of the church is that we have not yet understood by revelation our mandate, our purpose, and our commission. The second reason why the church carries a semblance of defeat a semblance of weakness is that we have not yet understood by revelation our corporate mandate, our corporate purpose, and our commission. The church is yet to understand our mandate, yet to understand our purpose. When Jesus walked upon the earth, did you notice that he was so meticulous in finding out and vocally declaring his purpose for being there? In Luke chapter 4, the Bible says he went to the temple and the scroll of Isaiah was given to him as his custom was. And the Bible says he found there where it was written concerning him. Apostle Paul making reference to that scripture, he said, Lo, I come. 
in the volume of the book as it is written of me. That means God is not deciding what to do with the church. The church came as a conclusion of God's intelligence. He factored in many things and arrived at this conclusion that the most formidable formula for this agenda is the church. And yet we wallow around as if God is hoping to know what to do with us. The inability to understand as a corporate people. Listen, the basis for unity, many of you here are leadership experts. And in leadership we learn that unity is difficult until there is vision. Vision is the force that binds, is the force of cohesion. It is impossible to be able to bring a people together in spite of their diversities until they have a vision and a creed that becomes bigger than their individual pursuits. This is how nations come together. Am I right on that? Yeah. So a vision is projected that becomes more superior to every other pursuit. Here in South Africa, we have such across Africa, across the globe. So any responsible citizen should be able to tell you the vision. I was sitting here when our beautiful people came to do the announcement and among the many things they said was with precision so that you are not confused. They told us the vision of the church, the mission of the church. Is that true? So the church, I can tell you, we have our individual agendas but the corporate mandate of the ecclesia is seldom known, seldom taught and largely not understood. So you ask the average Christian, why are you here? He will say things like to serve God or things like to worship God. He's just coining spiritual languages to, to just ease off ignorance and guilt. But you probe into what exactly they said, they will, you, it will be clear that they do not understand what they just said. We live to serve God. What does that mean? What does serving God mean? Coming to church? No. So one of the things we are going to be learning, if the church must rise to that point of influence and governance, it is important for us to know by revelation and without ambiguity our corporate mandate. What does God expect of us? Who is the believer? Why are we here? When we say church, what do we mean? Hallelujah. There are institutions that bring standardization to many fields and many practices. I believe that is so even in South Africa. So you have maybe an institution that regulates legal practice. Am I right on that? The assignment is to keep the practice within the coordinates of her vision. Because there is a tendency to veer off. Either through carelessness, through staleness of knowledge. Or any other factor. And so an institution was set up to make sure that people refresh their understanding as to why, whether it's the world of businessmen, the legal world, or whatever it is, why it was set up in the first place. Some of the leading institutions across the globe, they lead their various fields because among the many things that they do is that they, they imbibe as a creed in the mind of the students, the lecturers, and all who are part of that institution. This is why we exist. For this sole reason. If at any point you are found fighting this bigger agenda, even if what you are doing is correct, with respect to that agenda, you are a rebel. So that as a believer, you don't choose what to do simply because of the spirituality around it. No. There is an exact description as to what believers should be doing. It, listen, what you call your purpose and your assignment is you drawing from a piece of that big picture. Your assignment is your contribution to that larger body of God's program. Are we together? And with all due respect, ministers of the gospel, this is an apostolic conference. One of the things we must restore is an understanding of our corporate mandate as believers. Why did God leave the church? So we have all kinds of ideas. For instance, some say soul winning, 
Some say various things, pieces of the truth. But there has to be a concise and an intelligent presentation that matches God's expectation. This is why this convergence was allowed by the Spirit. So in addition to knowing our identity in light of who Christ is, we need to understand the corporate mandate of the church. Have I lost you? Are we together? Let me give you reason number three. What is the third reason for the current state of the church? Do me a favor. Your only thank you gift for me is to promise me you are going to listen to this message again. And that you are going to extend this message to anybody you know who loves God and is very serious. This is beyond a, an anointed preacher sharing truth. This is God bringing order and restoration to his body. You may have heard me say it in my teachings that the days of superstar Christianity is over. No. God's agenda is bigger than any Joshua Selman. Or, no, no, no. It is a privilege for us to be conduits. Our focus must be him, his program, his agenda. And the truth is that in doing that, he will not leave us small. The economy was designed to lift everything that serves God. Did you hear what I said? God's economy was designed to lift and glorify everything that served him. Back home, we call it Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Everything. Nothing serves God and remains at the same level. No. So you do not have to bother about your state while you serve God. Because serving God will make you look like a fool. But if you understand the intelligence and the justice of God, your consolation is that everything that serves God rises as you lift his name. Reason number three. I'm just introducing my session. The third reason why the church seems to not be a perfect portrait and a reflection of God's expectation is that we do not yet have the knowledge of the spiritual resources that have been given to the believer alongside the dynamics of activating them. Number three, the bankruptcy of the, the knowledge of the spiritual resources. Ladies and gentlemen, that God would open our eyes to see the resources that were coordinated to become systems of advantage to the believer and then to have an understanding on how to activate them. Ephesians 1 and verse 3 tells us Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and without delay, he went straight to tell them that God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All, not some. And he says they reside in heavenly places. So there is a problem there because you do not need them there. So the dynamics of understanding and transporting those resources to be used here and now for your advantage. Many believers do not understand. The average believer cannot tell you the resources that have been given to us by reason of our being grafted into Christ. There are many resources. Only an irresponsible government will send an individual to represent them and not equip them. Is that true? Any government that is sending an ambassador or anyone to promote their interest among the many packages, they ensure and even insist that that person is well equipped. A hospital can have professionals but not have the requisite machinery in terms of gadgets. And you see the hospital misrepresenting. There can be professors in that hospital, but they will tell you the latest machine to diagnose this and that is not there. And so the government, if the government wants to step up the standard in that hospital, beyond training the individuals, they must insist that state of the art materials. And how many of you know that any material that helps and sells in terms of gadgets are not cheap? So for you to know that God plays so much value, you need to understand the extent of resources. When David stood before Goliath, foolish Goliath was looking at his hands and David was saying no 
No, what I hold is only a token. It's a representation of greater resources. I didn't come alone. Goliath said, am I a dog? You come to me with your spheres. And David said, you will soon know that as I'm standing here, there are resources. Do you believe that? Listen, when you have an understanding of this, you will never, never stand to cry. As though one who were left as an orphan, no, no. There are resources beyond our awareness. And it is the assignment of the Spirit of God to search the mind of Christ, the Bible says, and to show us the things that have been freely given. In fact, yes, how the Bible puts it, Apostle Peter intelligently presents it. He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of, our, of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, then it says, according as his divine power, is that in your Bible? Hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. But he says, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue, he says, whereby are given to us, here it is, exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There are resources, ladies and gentlemen. There are resources. There are resources that the church can use to build nations. There are resources. And I'm not just, the least of them is finances. No, God will not insult you to just leave finances. No, that is, that in, in the ranking of spiritual resources, finances is the least. Because you will be learning that money itself is a product. And there is another capital that buys it. He calls it true riches. When I pray for people, I bless them and I tell them, may you never be so poor that all you have is money. Because there are resources in the spirit that are greater than finances. If you doubt me, ask two people in the Bible. One, the rich fool. He had money, but there were other things he did not have. Number two, the rich young ruler. He had everything and yet he came to Jesus. He said, there's something I do not have. Good master. There is another kind of resource beyond Hallelujah. I'm not going ahead of myself, but every time you see people blessed in the Bible, they never give anything physical and material. No. Abraham calls all his sons and gives them gifts and says, go. Then he says, Isaac, come. Kneel down. I want to place something on you. Listen. Never give Isaac anything that is recorded. He said, go. What is so powerful about spiritual resources that Esau as an adult will cry? What will make an adult who is already gifted, hard working? He went to the wilderness and brought food so he was not lazy. And he said, Father, such is there nothing left. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step. You lead me and I will follow you all of my days for step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days oh God you are my God and I will ever follow Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. 
I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. Step by step, you lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. I like this. Step by step, you lead me. I will follow you all of my days in ministry. Step by step, you lead me. Listen to me. In addition to all the graces that I've spoken here and the many who will be ministering, this is the mandate God gave me in this season for South Africa that by the Spirit to show you these three things. This, the understanding of these factors, ladies and gentlemen, will translate any individual, any, to become a greater expression of the glory of God. Never forget our key word, glory. A manifestation of the beauty and the excellence of the spirit. Yes, sir. That when men look at you, you become, you become a study of God. A living epistle. A continuation of their Bible study. They look at your life and the kind, the frame of intelligence that you have imported from the spirit. The dexterity of your life. The order, the beauty, the glory of God. That is the kind of God we must sell to the nations. Please sit down for a few minutes. Just lend me 10 minutes and then we'll be done for tonight. And please do not mind if I still call on my dear sister again at the end of this to still come and bring that song again. I hope you are not tired. You must be spiritual in Jesus' name. Now please pay attention. <laughs> Jesus, having spent three and a half years mentoring the disciples who shortly will be translated to apostles, he left them with one instruction. Now you know, but he said, tarry. Information is not enough. Tarry. You have no idea the formation that the gates of hell will bring. I need to show you the resources that are at your disposal. Tarry until ye be endued with power from on high. I've had the honor of traveling across a few nations in Africa and I'm already seeing that Ezekiel 37 formation. It's happening already. From Nigeria to Ghana to South Africa to Kenya to Uganda. Even to Europe and to America. We are seeing the formation of Ezekiel 47. A valley that is full of dry bones. There is an east wind that is already coming to the church. It's coming through apostolic and prophetic voices. Yes sir. I am telling you this by the spirit of the living God. Man of God, cheer up. You're not wasting your time on your members. I speak to every man of God. No matter how small, how great your congregation is. All is adding together. We are building momentum in the spirit. There is a crescendo. A point in the spirit. Where an army will rise. Men who were once ordinary. Rise as worshippers. As businessmen. As captains of industry. As heads of government. Even by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please sit down. Let me just give you one thing for tonight. If we, if we stop here, you can go home tonight rejoicing. 
As a man of God, you can go home tonight and convert a few hours of your night time to prayer. To say, Lord, so this is what you are doing. Now that I know, I position myself. The worshippers position themselves to receive the songs of Miriam. Ah, it was Miriam that wrote that song. I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he has triumphed gloriously. I can tell you by the spirit of the Lord. I came with the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic to show you what the spirit of God is doing across the nations. It is important we discern what he is doing. His church is rising. If the bride of a man is wounded, she is still his bride. And in the order of the good Samaritan, the bam in Gilead is walking. I know that the church has had all kinds of issues, but don't worry. The Lord of the harvest is still walking. Don't you conclude about this church. Then you do not know God. I know there have been scandals and issues, but don't you conclude God is still working. The great physician he's called, working upon his bride. Listen, 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 listen. Listen. I didn't plan this, but listen to me. Have you seen someone going through surgery in the hospital? There are surgeries called major surgeries. Sometimes for 11 hours, consultants changing hands. You would see the patient as though they were dead. Sometimes they have to crack through the skull and reach down to the brain. And delicate things are happening there. That's what God is doing in his bride. Man of God, find strength. You will not always cry. There is grace and glory coming. Oh yes. Mm. Here's what the Bible says. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. It says for the endless expectation of creation are waited. I think it's NLT that says creation is waiting for God to reveal who his sons truly are. South Africa, cheer up. The solution to the world will still find expression through this land. There are men and women, some in the cave of Adulam, some in the wilderness like David. They have no visibility yet. They have no comeliness yet. But you just walk with the Holy Ghost. He produces glory out of men. He produces glory out of men. He produces glory out of men. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you this. I'm going to say something that I want you to discern. Every time major prophetic revivals are coming upon nations, among the many things that God does, is he gives them new songs. Listen, a new song is not about music. It's a language, it's a system in the spirit that opens up vistas for people. You now understand why we're singing songs like this? Yes, sir. I've had to be receiving songs myself. I've had to sacrifice music for word ministry. But the spirit of God does not care. Once you are available, and you touch things in the spirit here come the songs I'm saying that so that you do not find it strange if in the place of prayer you receive a song that you will sing all through and then even forget it at the end of the prayer maybe just remember a line or song it was a ladder for you to ascend realms in the spirit hallelujah please give me five more minutes sit down Tomorrow, even if it's 6 a.m. in the morning, come and roam around praying in the spirit and wait here. Are we together? Invite everybody in South Africa, every man of God. This is more than a house of treasures conference. It's an apostolic convergence. The Lord, by his spirit and by mercy, is opening to us the blueprint of his dealings for the season. Do not make the mistake of acts.
18 and Acts 19, there was a man called Apollos of Alexandria, eloquent in scripture, fervent in spirit, but he knew only. There are people who know very much but do not know what God is doing now. It's important for you to understand the speakings of God now. Then in Acts chapter 19, Paul, having traveled through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus, the Bible says, and found certain disciples. They were being mentored. And he asked them a question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Even though they were disciples, they said, we've not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost. So who was teaching them? And what were they learning? There was another move that had started and these guys were still using a manuscript that was not applicable as far as the move of the Spirit was concerned. Paul was disturbed. And he said, unto what then were you baptized? And as innocent disciples, they said, unto John's baptism. He said, no. Conferences like this, I have told you, is more than men of God just coming to display revelation and power. No. Those days are over. Is God coming through privileged vessels to speak to nations and territories, revealing the blueprint of the spirit part time. And in truth, it does not matter what vessel is used. The, most, the message is bigger than the messenger. It's the message that even makes the messenger valuable. Hmm. Hallelujah. And I hope that as we preach the word, that among the many things you see, is that you see Christ exalted through our lives. Beyond the blessings and the paraphernalia of ministry, the honor that we receive, look beyond those things and see sincere people who are desperate and determined to see only Jesus lifted. This has been the theme of my life. Thank God for the honor and the blessings. But in doing this, we are also having the privilege to mentor a generation coming to kill flesh quick so that they don't destroy themselves. The desire for pride and the desire to be a superstar, to be the person at the center stage. No. God is lovingly editing that ideology out of the body of Christ and restoring Christ as the epicenter of our pursuit. Hallelujah. Let me tell you three things. I have about seven here, but I want to tell you three things the Bible says the church is, and then we'll, we'll close for tonight. Number one, 1 Peter 2 and verse 9, I'm showing you who you are in light of who Christ is. Here's what Apostle Peter has to tell us. But ye are a chosen generation. Listen carefully. He says we are a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people a rare breed and we are mandated to go and show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light number two what does he call us Ephesians 2 10 he calls us his workmanship you know what a man's workmanship means? The tool that you use to express your creativity is called your workmanship. Hallelujah. Not just the product of your creativity, but the tools that you use. So when a doctor wants to carry out his medical procedures, the stethoscope, the syringes, the, you know, surgical knives, those are his workmanship. Not just the artistry, but what he will use to demonstrate it. So every time God wants to say something upon the earth, he does not use a pen, he uses man. We are his workmanship. As mighty as God is, he has chosen to incorporate me. Not because he cannot do without me, but he has chosen. Look how helpless God looked all through scripture until he found man. As mighty as God was and is, he seemed incapacitated and he himself would say, I sought for a man. Not I sought for power. I am all powerful. But my agenda and my program 
when you know that as mighty as God is, he has factored you in the equation of his glory. You will not depend on any man. The complex, low self-esteem will die a natural death. It is amazing to know that God has chosen to depend on me. Very expensive statement. But it is true. That when God wants to come to South Africa, he says, among the many people who represent me, can you come? So when we come, he has come. When we speak, he has spoken. Listen, it's a very simple revelation, but it brought healing to my life. You come from a background where there is no comeliness, and nothing around your life by default represents an advantage. We live in a world where men can bully you using all kinds of parameters. Especially our generation. And we've tilted towards the path of corruption and destruction. All in a way to heal an old wound. To try to create a narrative that we are great. Yet the Bible has structured a system to educate you. To help you know. Not just that he died for you, but the things that he calls you. Men can tell you God said this about you, but listen to what he said himself. Not just about himself. Theologically speaking, there are 10 I am statements in the Bible, the New Testament, the Gospels and Revelations that Jesus said he is and he was. Seven of them in the Gospels, the remaining three, you find it in Revelation. But he did not just speak about himself. He spoke about the believer. The final thing he had to say about you is found in Matthew chapter 5, 13 to 16. He starts by saying you are the salt of South Africa. The assignment of salt is number one, to preserve. Number two, to add taste. And you may have heard me say it in my teachings. It is never too late to add salt to any meal. There are certain ingredients that if you do not bring them at the certain time, you have ruined the meal. Am I right on that, women? Not salt. Even at the table, you will still find salt there in case. That means there is nothing like too late. No. Don't say I am 75, too old, not when you are salt. There is still a space for you. It says you are the salt of the earth. It says, but if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, it is good for nothing except to be thrown and trampled the foot of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. I love that one. Light. Do you know the most powerful thing I learned about light? It does not have to be everywhere. To illuminate everywhere light can be at one point and every part of the room can feel the impact and then like you may have heard me teach imagine with me a room that has been dark for 10 years another room dark for one year another room dark for two days if you connect all of them and switch on the light which one will come up first the longevity of darkness does not affect light. As soon as it appears, it says you are the light. So don't complain and say this has existed for 50 years. No, it doesn't matter. The moment the light shows up, light. Light. I know that witchcraft and ancestry and satanic manipulations have happened in your family for 100 years. But when light comes, John 1, 5, and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The light introduces a new order. A new order. It stops the usual. Disrupts status quo. Hallelujah. Hear me, I want to leave you 
with this one message tonight that number one you have been preordained and predestined unto glory the church of the Lord Jesus Christ was not designed to be a weak beggarly support needing church no equipped within this system this nation this economy called the church is supposed to be a representation of intelligence that cannot be found by any other civilization God himself resides within his body his wisdom resides within his body but then I also told you that the tragedy is that we are not yet in the fullness of God's expectation but do you know what the Spirit of God is patient with us and guiding us step by step through the ministry of teaching priests through the ministry of prophetic psalmists thanks to the acceleration that technology has brought granting us access to truth at a rate that we have never had listen to me ladies and gentlemen God seeks to raise a mighty church out of South Africa if Jesus Christ were to speak over South Africa he will move beyond saying house of treasures he will say the church in South Africa read revelations the church in Pergamos the church in Philadelphia that means in the mind of God there is either the church or nothing else so the corporate body of believers in truth we may not agree in everything in terms of doctrine and then because of our personal press and alignment we may differ but I told you the binder of a people is vision vision that is greater than their personal ambitions I truly believe with all my heart that among the many things that this conference seeks to do is to bring the body of Christ across South Africa to say that there is a sound that needs to come out from South Africa one sound one sound one sound even the demons that were in the legion one person spoke on their behalf he said we are legion but I'm the one speaking unity is not uniformity no unity is not exactness no unity is looking up to a higher vision and a higher call that is greater than our individual ambitions and this is what we may disagree in many things but it should not be about projecting Jesus and bringing revival to nations tomorrow by the grace of God I'm going to take the time to now begin to build and to show you even by the spirit of the living God in addition to our identity it is important to understand our corporate mandate as a people hallelujah and the full extent of God's expectation and then we'll consider by the spirit of God you need to hear that one the resources that have been made available on account of this assignment but for tonight let me the next two three minutes as we go ahead and worship two three minutes I'm going to stand to speak there is a renewing my apologies for just stretching just two three minutes let's honor the woman of God and be prepared that whilst you worship let there be a purging in the spirit to know that there can be more in the spirit.
For this that is birthed in South Africa. For this that is birthed across Southern Africa. with someone by your left and right just in a moment I want to make a prayer for tonight father we see the things that you are doing across the nations the spirit of revival indeed is returning to your body from Nigeria to Ghana to South Africa Kenya Zimbabwe Zambia sweeping across Europe America Ezekiel 37 is coming alive again and Lord here at house of treasures we lift up one sound as your church even within this region and we declare that in spite of all that has happened in and around the church in South Africa Jesus still remains Lord Jesus still remains King and that in the name of Jesus the church of the Lord Jesus is rising as a mighty army a mighty army endued with power endued with wisdom in the name of Jesus therefore father we pray that from the north to the south east to the west of South Africa let there be a reawakening in the name of Jesus let worshipers arise let ministers of the gospel arise let those who have fallen arise let those who are standing remain strong Lord we pray that by all means let your program and your agenda find expression let your glory be birthed in this land and in this region like never before in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. I believe that in my lifetime, that in our lifetime, we will see this glory of the church that we have prayed for, fasted for, bent over backwards for. I believe that in our lifetime, the Lord will hasten his word. The spirit of God will bring speed to this accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just, just give me a moment. Hallelujah. Um, Apostle has requested. I should have done that. I just considered the time. This is a good opportunity to give someone a chance. Please let's minimize movement. Just lend me a minute or two. I'm standing here with Apostle Felix and we want to make a call. Hallelujah. This call is for a 
total surrender. You are in this place among the thousands here gathered, the ones outside, and the many more who are following online. Perhaps you might be watching, even as a rebroadcast, it is never too late to make it right with Jesus. We want to give someone an opportunity right now who is saying, Apostle, I need Jesus in my life. Or you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life. I'm tired of playing church. I mean business with Jesus. Now, wherever you are, we're going to count one to five. And as much as possible, make use of the larger parts of the, the front here so that um, we just give honor to the ministers. I'm going to count one to five. Um, you see, the things of the Spirit don't require compulsion, but you know that you need Jesus. Not after a message like this, not after the sounds of worship that have come. I want to count one to five. I want you to run and leave your seat. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. I begin the counting. One. Go ahead. Go ahead. Someone is running. Two. Here in South Africa, Jesus remains Lord. Three. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Celebrate them as they come, young and old, male and female, educated and uneducated alike. Come, you are welcome. The King of Glory wants to change your life. The Maker wants to make you. The Builder wants to build you. The Restorer wants to restore you. The Lifter wants to lift you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can stand where you are the moment the front is filled. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much on behalf of Jesus. And then the angel over this house is my joy and my honor to lead you in this prayer. I want you to lift your right hand as high as you can as a sign of surrender. And then say this after me loud and clear. Please say, Lord Jesus. Particularly for those in front, say, Lord Jesus. I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive your life into my spirit. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, Hell and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your wonderful hands lifted. Father, we thank you because the Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. These precious ones have come. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' much less name, we pray. Amen. Okay, here's what I want you to do for me. Just for a few minutes, I want all of you in concert. Please, can you move to right there, my left? Yeah, quick. that will be your right. And then they'll have a word with you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Very quickly, all of you, God bless you. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping as they go. Celebrate the multitude of harvest. Come on, somebody celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't stop clapping for them as they go. Come on. Remember, angels are rejoicing. Angels are having a party in heaven because of this number of souls.
more time, let's give Jesus a clap offering tonight. Come on. Uh -uh. I say celebrate Jesus. Come on, give Jesus praise. Can we celebrate the